Well, good morning. I'm Daniel, the Low Budget Outdoorsman here again. Today, I thought I'd do a little video just to show you my setup. I don't have a, obviously, a fancy boat, but it catches a lot of fish. It gets me on the water, especially in the creeks, in the bays, on the big lake. And uh, in the big lake, I'm talking about, when I say the big lake, I'm talking about Kentucky Lake. I live here in uh, Middle Tennessee, to the boat. It's simply a 10-foot John boat, but I have it fitted out with about as much uh, as you can put on it in an efficient manner. So the boat set up here. Let me show you what we got going on. What I have here is a transom mount trolling motor that I've put on the front. Uh, the reason I do that for a couple of things. One, uh, I had a little foot one that I uh, cut the shaft and shortened it and retapped it, but it was just too difficult and too unstable for myself uh, to operate a foot trolling motor one from that small deck that I've built. Um, so I have a transom mount one, and that also allows me a little bit of stability to hold on to that while I'm trolling. I mentioned the deck. I put a little deck, and I'll show you here shortly what's underneath of it um, to support it. But it's just quarter inch plywood, and then uh, I put some foam underneath of it, and I'll show you that in a minute here. Next we go, uh, also under the deck, you see I have a bilge pump and there's the exit for the bilge pump. Next we have my cooler which doubles as a seat and a live well and I'll show you inside of that here momentarily. What we've done is we've simply purchased one of those pump systems that recirculates the water. Uh, it's a submersible little pump. Now you can get those at Academy, uh, Dick's, uh, Amazon, and it's simpler than you know manufacturing the whole setup for yourself. Um, that makes it easy to throw the pump out in the water and fill the cooler um, or to drain the cooler. Next, coming back here, obviously I have a seat in the back. Always keep a kill switch for your motor. The seat is on a swivel. I mounted a small piece of plywood underneath uh, to move the seat forward just a bit and that allows me uh, room for the tiller handle on the motor. The motor I have is just a simple Briggs & Stratton air-cooled, basically a lawnmower engine with a lower unit. Um, it's a little five horse and I can go about um, 14 or 15 miles an hour um, by myself in this boat. So you're not going anywhere very fast, but like I said, it's not a boat that's designed to go very fast. Now rod storage. Rod storage, I have uh, a bungee cord that holds the back of them down. That bungee cord is connected to one on the other side, which when I launch the boat or get in shallow water, when I pull the motor up, I connect it to this right here, this back handle, um, and that holds the motor up in really shallow water or when I'm launching. Um, my rods are stored here on the front with just a simple small bungee cord that keeps them tied down while I am in transit. Moving around to the back of the boat, we have my homemade power pole, shallow water anchor system. It's simply made out of aluminum, um, a little bit of square tube steel, a piece of all thread, and this works actually quite a bit better than one would think. I have it connected up top here with a piece of paracord or 550 cord to a pulley that is actually just an old um, line spool. And then that comes, is supported by a little piece of um, angle galvanized um, metal. And then I have this hooked down here where when I'm up on my front deck, I can simply unhook the cord to my power pole. And so by doing that, simply unhooking this, the anchor system goes down, plugs into the water, into the mud, and obviously works as intended. So it's a very simple setup. I have a gate hinge 
as my actuator that pulls it down and the 550 cord or paracord holds it up once again just pull it and it comes up i have my net that's set on this side right here and that's easy access for when i need it and then i have right here a simple um, bungee net for my tackle storage. I have my jigs, my terminal tackle, square bill, assorted crankbaits. I have lipless. I have some more crankbaits here, my spinners, my um, jerk baits, and my top water. And in a bag, I have my trailers and creatures, my flukes and swim baits, and my uh, worms and stick baits. Also, I have a paddle right here that uh, keeps it legal and if necessary in the event that the motor isn't working, obviously you can get to shore. I also carry a little Berkley 35 pound um, scale, digital scale. That way, uh, if I catch a PB, I can get that um, recorded also. I have mounted a little 12 volt outlet there that powers my live well. By allowing it, by powering it like that, it allows me to remove the live well um, without taking the water out because it's not direct power to anything. So let me take that off and I'll show you a couple other things here. All right, so I've removed my live well and I've removed my casting deck and I'll show you what I got. Underneath the casting deck is this one inch foam that goes under uh, siding. You can buy it from Lowe's or Home Depot or any home improvement store. This reduces the weight a lot and added a lot of strength um, to that front casting deck that allowed me to put just a quarter inch piece of plywood. Instead of having to go with marine grade plywood, I just went with a thin quarter inch piece of plywood and uh, put a little carpet on it just for aesthetics. So that is my system. I have my bilge pump in there for when it rains heavily and I'm on the water. I have my trolling motor wired where it runs from at the front here where I have my uh, ruler, my tape measure ruler mounted. And then it runs underneath the casting deck to keep that little bit of wire away. It runs down here and underneath my seat, underneath my live well, I have my battery which powers my trolling motor, my bilge pump, and my live well. Obviously, I don't need to run all of those at the same time very often. If you wanted to see, I do have rod holders. I have four of them, well, five of them. I have two on the front, and I have two in the center where the oars would have been mounted, and then I have one clip on one in the back. More than anything, I use these rod holders uh, not for trolling or fishing, but just as places to set things while I'm uh, on the boat if I'm uh, retying something it's nice to set one in a rod holder if I am and I'll show you here how I set the rods in a fishing setup where they're accessible because when you're fishing with this many rods uh, if you just have them all in a big pile you're not gonna be able to get to them so rod layout while I'm fishing while I'm on the deck I usually carry when I'm fishing for bass I usually carry four casting rods and two or three spinning rods and those two, obviously one of those will be in my hand, uh, the two primary ones I'm gonna use, followed by the two secondary ones underneath of it, and I lay those on the side of the boat right there, and then my two spinning ones I leave off the back and let them set right there next to the live well. And so I can access all of those fairly easily, like if I need this one down here, I can still get it without I can get it without, you know, moving a bunch of the other ones. Same thing if I want to grab my worm rod, if I want to reach back here and grab my donkey rig, my double fluke setup on the spinning, or if I want to get my flipping stick here, or my crankbait rod. Everything is actually fairly accessible, much more so than you would think on a small boat. Just a quick rundown of my rods. I have three. Abu Garcia Veritas 2.0s. I have a couple of old 
Abu Vendettas, and I have an old Abu Verdict. Now, none of these rods have I bought at retail prices. You can get either manufacturer rebate sales or like the Verdicts, when they discontinued those, I got several at well over half off their, their retail price. Same thing with my reels. I, I have bought basically one reel every year or every other year. So going way back, I have an old Abu Revo S that's about six years old. And then I have a uh, Revo SX high speed. And then I have a Revo uh, winch uh, low speed gear ratio. And then I have the, the nicer one I have is a medium speed Revo Premier. Now the Revo Premier I got from a local shop because they ordered it in left hand and it didn't sell for over a year and a half. So they sold it to me at their cost. So when you're looking to be on a budget, look for discontinued items, look for sale items, especially if the sales can be combined with manufacturers, uh, mail-in coupons, or check your local bait shop, your, your locally owned, not your retail chain one, but your local bait and tackle shop. If they have some equipment, some merchandise sitting around for a year, year and a half that hasn't sold, just ask them, hey, what do you gotta have for that? If it doesn't look like it's gonna sell, they'll be willing to just get their money back for it. So those are a couple of ways you can save on tackle or, uh, or equipment, I should say, on your rods, on your reels. Well, that is my setup, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this short little video. Um, listen, you don't have to have a 20 foot bass boat to catch bass. This little 10 foot John boat has caught at least hundreds and hundreds in the lengthy time that it's been owned uh, by me. Don't be discouraged if you don't have the money for the fanciest equipment. Um, you can find a small John boat on Craigslist quite often. Um, and the thing with this boat is it can double for your duck boat. It can do a lot of different things um, that you, you're not gonna do with a, with a bass boat. Sure, it has its, its drawbacks. You're not gonna get out and fish in the middle of Kentucky Lake and, and ledge fish in the summer. Um, but there are fish in creeks, there's fish in bays, and uh, you can have a good time um, both with yourself and with a friend, provided they're not too heavy. Alrighty, I hope you have a good day. I'm Daniel, the Low Budget Outdoorsman.